Haven't you noticed how it's damn near impossible to go anywhere without having to check your phone or look at your phone or just be on your phone the entire time? Even when you're bored, you constantly pick it up, you'll look at it just just for no for no reason at all. You just checked it five seconds ago. And we're more distracted than we've ever been in the history of humanity at this point. Our minds are constantly being hijacked by algorithms galore. And it's no wonder why we're so burnt out and stressed out of our minds and why we feel hopeless like there's no way out. Because we know there are certain things that we need to do to work towards the goals that we have and to ultimately live the life that we want. But our motivation is constantly being stolen by all of these other inputs from the outside world. And if you spent any amount of time trying to solve this problem, you've probably came across dopamine detoxing. And I feel like a couple of years ago, it had this cult-like surge where everybody was talking about it. But the fact remains, we are all well aware that this is becoming a constant problem. And we are constantly out looking for solutions because we know if we can figure this out and we can get our attention back and focused on the things that we know we should do that's best for ourselves, then we know we will become damn near limitless in whatever it is that we can achieve that's obviously within the realms of possibilities. And this could be learning skills to make more money, getting a new job that pays you more, getting more energy to go to the gym, building the body of your dreams, or even just talking up the baddie at the local coffee shop down the street. Now, the idea of dopamine detoxing is great, but the problem that I personally ran into whenever I tried to do it was that I was viewing dopamine as a negative thing. Because with dopamine detoxing, everybody's going to tell you, avoid it at all costs, go nightmare mode, become a hermit, and only work every hour of the day for the for the rest of your life. But the real problem with dopamine detoxing is that exact idea that dopamine is bad. But dopamine is actually our primary motivation neurotransmitter. So we need it to actually do stuff. And the activities that we generally find ourselves addicted to are high dopamine inducing activities. Whereas the activities, the things that we know we need to do that's best for ourselves are generally low dopamine inducing. And so I had went through this whole dopamine detox phase, hated my life, decided to do something else, did some time management strategies, little you know productivity, stuff like that. And eventually I was able to get to where I wasn't really affected by like how much I was scrolling on my phone and I could still do things that I know I needed to do for myself and essentially develop more discipline. But it, within the last like couple months, I came across a video from Dr. K over at Healthy Gamer where he went in like deep into the neuroscience of how dopamine in the brain kind of plays into each other. And it finally answered my question to why did all of these things that I'm doing actually work? Because I knew they worked, but I didn't know why. So I didn't know what to tell people at that moment until now. So basically, first, you just have to understand there are multiple aspects of the brain that go into your dopamine system. And since there are four different parts of the brain, there are four different things that we can do that can enhance our ability to stay disciplined and want to do hard things that we know are good for us. So first, we just understand the pattern of behavioral reinforcement, which is what creates motivation to do said activity or said task again and again and again. And it goes action. We get a hit of dopamine, we get pleasure because we're happy that we did the thing, and then it loops back around into a constant cycle. Now, hard things require a lot of dopamine to be available. And in order to do low dopamine inducing activities, we just need more dopamine available for us to use it. And this is generally best at the beginning of our day after sleeping. So if we think about it like money, if you have more, spending isn't as stressful. If you have less, you're going to stress out a little bit more about what you're spending your money on. So think about dopamine kind of like a lemon. When it's fresh, doesn't take a whole lot to squeeze some of the juice out. But as you keep squeezing, it takes more and more effort to get every last little bit out. And this is what social media and high dopamine activities do. They're like squeezing the hell out of the lemon. So one of the main keys to utilizing dopamine to do things that you actually want to do means doing things that you know you should earlier in the day when dopamine levels are at their highest since they are naturally going to fall as the day goes on. As you do things throughout the day, you get less motivated for the next thing with each activity that you do, making it harder to do those things. So the more dopamine that we have available, the easier it is to maintain sustained effort 
which is what most of us are wanting from motivation because we know that the big goals that we have are going to require that sustained effort over time. So if we wake up and we immediately look at our phones, we have more dopamine squeezed out faster. It's like having a fresh lemon and just crushing it as hard as you can without, you know, divvying it up however the hell you want to, whatever you're doing with that damn lemon. But this is why at the end of the day, when we know what we should be doing, no matter how bad we want to, we still don't because massive amounts of dopamine were released super early in the day, thus makes us unmotivated, which then feeds into another dopamine loop, which is when we feel really terrible about ourselves, it makes things even worse because our emotions make us highly sensitive to dopamine. And this is where the limbic system, the amygdala, and those parts of the brain start to connect back to dopamine and motivation. The worse that you feel about yourself and the more anxious that you are, the harder it's going to be to do anything that you want to do for yourself and the easier it is to fall prey to doom scrolling or the the uh, self-care where people seem like they're self-caring every single day of the week, which really isn't even doing that much for them at that point. And so when we're struggling, when emotions are, you know, we're anxious, we're stressed, depressed, our brain wants some form of pleasure to alleviate pain. So it seeks easy wins. And this comes in the form of social media, the hub, wasting time watching Netflix whenever you know you need to do something else. So we need to learn to deal with our negative emotions and learn to process them effectively. So this looks like being able to feel the physical feeling of an emotion, listen to what your mind is looping back to you, and attempt to rewrite the meaning that we are putting behind it. And that could be a whole 45 minute video in itself, but more or less just go outside, go for a walk, tell me you don't feel at least a little bit better after. It may not solve all of your problems, but movement can allow some of that pent up energy and emotions to kind of dissipate. And it also allows you to take some time to maybe have some perspective on it. So another thing that affects our motivation and dopamine levels are the value assessments that we give certain activities. So anytime we are wanting to do something difficult or something we know requires some form of discipline, there's another part of our brain that is do basically making an unconscious value assessment on the activity. So anytime we are wanting to do something difficult or something that we know is going to require a certain amount of discipline, there's another part of our brain that is doing an unconscious value assessment of the activity and the alternative activi activity that kind of popped up into our head. So our brains are basically deciding, is this hard activity worth me doing right now when I could do this other thing that would be so much better and would alleviate so much more pain? And this is what happens in college whenever you know you have a test at the end of the week, but you still decide to wait until the night before to cram and then you're all stressed out and you panic at the last minute. And that's because at the time, whenever you knew you could either study or play video games, you chose to play video games because this subconscious value assessment felt that at that moment in time, that was better than doing the other thing. Now, this is habitual and you do this really without you even knowing, but it has a super simple fix. So when you're in a spot where you need to do either thing A, so go to the gym or thing B, stay at home and stuff your face with pizza and Ben and Jerry's, write down on a physical piece of paper what the consequences will be if you don't do that thing. Now, it may not be an immediate consequence. It may not be an, a consequence outside of you, but also keep in mind, how are you going to feel if you don't do that thing? And this has been a big one for me where I'm trying to grow a YouTube channel. I'm trying to I'm trying a bunch of different things to be able to provide for myself and not need a job forever. So what I, st in, in the past, I really struggled with like staying consistent and doing something consistently, even though I may not see a payoff for over a year. And eventually what I had to do with really within the last probably six months to a year was I had to just reaffirm to myself, if I don't do this, I am going to hate myself a year from now, knowing that I let a year of another year of my life go by without continuing to do the thing. And so what this does is this brings the subconscious to the conscious part of your brain. So you can one start to see things from your, and what this does is it brings the subconscious to the conscious. So you can one 
start to see things your mind is doing as far as like playing tricks on you and trying to justify doing something, you know, you don't need to do. And two, you can start to rewrite the subconscious programming and you may not end up doing the thing that you want to do to the best of your ability. You may not even do it at all, but you do start to slowly rewrite this subconscious value assessment. And so your brain will start to look at things a little bit differently. And over time you will notice that you start to make better decisions for yourself. And this works because if you can do this and say, say you do it and you know, you should, but you still don't guilt and shame are powerful catalysts for change. So by not doing the thing, you'll feel kind of bad because you know, it was within your control. Then you become more mindful of that. And then over time, that value assessment slowly changes to where your brain will eventually be like, dude, we want to feel good. So you just should do the hard thing. So you feel better about yourself. So the next thing that we can do as far as improving motivation is to seek novelty. Our brains love new shit. So we can provide something new within the realm of the thing that we are trying to do for ourselves. And then we can invite the part of the brain that loves novelty. So if you want to start going to the gym or you want to get more results in the gym and you know, you need to go more often and train harder or train smarter, this could be just doing a new style of training. So for me, I had an experience where I was powerlifting for a number of years. I got burnt out on it. I hated the gym. I hated going period. And I just, sw I switched it up to bodybuilding, changed workouts a little bit. Boom. I love the gym again. And it could, for you, it could be going to the gym with friends. It could be going and doing a boot camp class. It could be switching up to running if you're used to lifting weights and you just hate lifting weights right now. There's always some thing that you can add in or something new that you can do. So for work, if like in your day job, this could be like a new method or system to try out to make things more efficient, or it could just be scheduling your day differently. Take a new route to work, do different things that just kind of it mixes things up a little bit because more something that is more like is different or more different is going to be easier to try. So video games do a really good job of this where you think about something like a uh, GTA five, they just have a constant amount of DLCs and those DLCs are what keep people coming back because it's novelty. It's new and people need that new in order to con continue to participate in the game. And so part of the game though brings me to the last point, which is you need to go after some level of pain. So the brain does have something in it that craves a certain level of pain. And a lot of like, if you think about, you know, in with the concept of flow, so like staying super focused at something, it's whenever, you know, it's the perfect balance where challenge meets skill. Same thing can be pain. You're not trying to just, you know, obliterate yourself, but you are trying to just surpass the threshold of what you're comfortable with. So if you think about the gym with working out, if we half-ass a workout, then normally we're not really going to feel like going, going back again, because we know we didn't try that hard. Therefore our minds like, well, we must not care that much about it. But those workouts where we reach just past what we're comfortable with, we feel amazing after doing it. And if you think about any video games you played, or if you were an athlete or competitive at any point, the most focused and motivated you ever were was whenever competition was tight. If things were too easy and you were blowing a team out or you were just dominating a game, it isn't very fun. You kind of start to get bored with it. And this can also be exemplified in hypertrophy training or if you're trying to grow muscle, the most stimulating reps are the last four to five reps of a set to failure. And as you get closer to failure, they get a little bit more stimulating. So you have to reach a certain threshold in order to actually stimulate muscle growth. And the same, the exact same thing is going to be said for building discipline and sustained effort. So it's going, doing things that are just outside of what you're comfortable with that leads to the most results over time. So to review, if you want to get more motivation out of yourself, do the most important things first early in the day before you have a ton of input from the outside world. Deal with negative emotions by going for a walk or moving your body in some way and learn how to rewrite the script that's going on in your head of what is going on with those emotions and what those emotions mean. You also need to create a conscious value assessment when you find yourself stuck between doing the hard thing and the easy thing so you can rewrite that sub subconscious value assessment to start to act in the direction that you want it to go. 
You also have to do something new. You can also do something new in the realm of the activity that you're trying to avoid to increase novelty. And then last, you have to add a certain level of pain just beyond what you're comfortable with. So hope you took some value away from this, but until next time, peace.